I've been thinking of buying a ProPride hitch, which is advertised as completely eliminating trailers way, and I wanted to get a better understanding of how that works, so I built a model, which I'll demonstrate. And I should say that this is just my understanding of how the hitch works. This is not official ProPride information. So what I have is a couple of some Lego pieces here. The blue piece here uh, represents the part of the hitch attached to the trailer. The yellow piece, which is shorter, is the part attached to the tow vehicle. They're connected by two arms. And, uh, oops, there we go. There's some movement in there. Not as much as in the real hitch, but enough for purposes of demonstration. And I'm just going to reinforce this with a few more pieces. So I don't want it to fly apart during the, during the demo. And I'm also attaching a couple of pieces to the front. The reason for that will become clear in a moment. So there's my working model. I need to tow this with something. And rather than tow with a four-wheel vehicle, I've decided I'm going to tow this with a Segway. Now, I've chosen a Segway because as a two-wheel vehicle, it's very directionally unstable. And I figure if I can get this hitch to work such that the Segway doesn't experience sway, I'm certainly not going to have any problem with a four-wheel vehicle. So I'm going to attach this uh, Segway at different points along, my, uh, along this arm. And the first point that I'm going to attach it is right up by the hitch. Now, this is not a real-world scenario for two reasons. One is you're not going to be toying with a Segway. And two, you're not going to have your wheels right up by the hitch. But I think this demonstrates something very important about how the hitch actually works. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get a side load, uh, let's say a wind load on the trailer, and that's going to be resisted by the friction of the wheels on the ground. But because this is a model and there's not much friction, I'm just going to represent that, simulate that by pressing with my finger here. See, here comes the side load. It's resisted and the linkage moves. And in fact, if the trailer goes this way and the Segway is now pointed further that way. Again, this is not a real world scenario. But why is it happening in the first place? Well, it's happening because in normal straight ahead configuration, the front and rear of the hitch, those arms are in parallel, and these arms are both angled. As soon as there's a side load, what happens? This arm becomes more perpendicular, this one becomes more angled, this distance is now greater than this distance, and that's what causes this twisting motion. And that's the opposite of what happens in a regular hitch. In a regular hitch, if this is your tow vehicle and this is the trailer, when you get that load uh, on the trailer, it's going to point the, the tow vehicle in the other direction and you get some sway, maybe a jackknife. Here, the opposite is happening. Now, what's interesting about this is that as I move my finger up the arm here, it takes more and more force to actually get that linkage to move until I reach a point, put the wheels right out at the end here, where I can push on that all I want, and this thing is not going to move. And why is that happening? Well, if you look at it from the perspective of the trailer. I'm going to apply the same forces as before, except now I'm just going to hold the back end of the hitch in place and I'm going to move the front end. So in order for this linkage to move at all, obviously this arm is going to have to move as well if I'm pressing on the arm. And up here, no problem, it moves. But look up at the wheels there. At the wheels, when I move this, the wheels really aren't moving side to side at all. So it doesn't matter how hard I push here. There's no movement. There's just no place for it to go. Those are, those are stable. In fact, this is what I believe Sean um, at ProPride calls the projected pivot point. And like any pivot point, if you apply a force outside the pivot point, you can get the thing to move. But applying a force at the pivot point, I mean, you can maybe move the thing sideways, but it's really not going to um, cause any sway at all. So. And just in the event that someone thinks, I'm just going to make sure I've got everything, all my pieces tight here. Just in the event that anybody thinks that I've kind of fudged this somehow and that the linkage is, is otherwise being locked in place. I've got another demonstration and uh, hopefully this will work because last time I tried it, my little tow vehicle actually exploded from the forces involved. So what I'm going to do now is I've got a water bottle here. Water bottle is about two-thirds full, three-quarters full, probably weighs close to a couple of pounds. I'm going to just try and lift this. Oh, looks like my wheels fell off there. Try that again. Okay. And you can see I'm lifting that water bottle and I'm not getting any movement at all. 
So what this tells me is that I have a hitch which is completely impervious to sway in this configuration. I can tow this trailer with my two-wheel Segway and I'm not going to have any difficulty. So obviously a four-wheel vehicle also is not going to cause a problem. Now, the position of the wheels on this model roughly corresponds to the position of the rear axle on most tow vehicles. So what you're going to have is, in effect, the, the hitch point over the rear axle, possibly just ahead of the rear axle. I think Sean said this is uh, something like uh, just over four feet, the, the pivot point in front of the hitch. And what that means is that your tow vehicle is essentially going to function as it's, it's going to function as if you had were towing a fifth wheel, where the pivot point is is over the axle.